was young, I used to watch EastEnders, and I'm sure I'm not the only one who watched EastEnders or watches it. But one thing about EastEnders is you're always waiting for something to go wrong. And it's because you've seen in the past there's been so many things gone wrong. Even when something good happens to someone, it's not long before it all ends in tears. And so whenever something's happening in EastEnders, as soon as it's happening, you're thinking, oh, but when? When will it go wrong? When will it all go wrong? When will it be a disaster? In our reading today, Paul talks about the future and the way that we should approach the future, how we should think about the future, and indeed how we should think about the past. And sometimes, because we have, you know, had a different experience in the past, maybe a negative experience, something bad happened to us or something difficult happened, we can project, I mean, I mean project, you know, like PowerPoint projectors, we can project that negative experience of the past onto the future so that we look towards the future in a negative way because of bad traumatic things that have happened to us in the past. Sometimes people can can ha not be helpful in this and I'm sure Paul could relate to this. You know he wasn't quickly and readily trusted by the Christians. This is understandable. Paul had been going round arresting Christians, putting them in prison for being Christians and so when Paul had his conversion, when light fell from heaven and Paul suddenly believed in Jesus and started talking about Jesus, the Christians around him weren't too sure if this guy was really what he, he said he was or if he was still secretly planning to arrest them. And so Paul wasn't quickly accepted by the believers. And you can just imagine Paul getting hung up about this getting hung up about the fact that, oh, he used to be a leader in another religious organisation, a very important person, one of the pedigrees, highest pedigree, you know, the best quality person in that religion. And now he's come to this new Christian faith and some people don't trust him precisely because of his past. Even though... I too, says Paul, have reason for confidence in the flesh. If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee. As to zeal, a persecutor of the church. As to righteousness, under the law, blameless. Yet what ever gains I had. These have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things and I regard them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in death. If somehow I may attain resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or I have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on towards the goal 
for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. Paul says, I don't look back. I don't look back. I consider the past something not to be dwelt on, not to be thought about all the time. But I look forward. I look forward towards what God is going to do in my life and in the lives of others. Paul has a positive, hopeful approach to the future. Why? Well, EastEnders wasn't invented then, and so you wouldn't despair about every future event. But no, Paul has a positive outlook on life because he believes that the God who rules the universe is going to do what God thinks is right and important. So Paul, trusting that God is good and that God is in control, goes towards the future with hope. And he runs with hope, forgetting what is past, towards the goal, becoming more like Jesus. Do you allow negative or tragic experiences from the past ensnare you? Do you look towards the future with hope? Or do you have a bad, negative idea of the future? Oh, nothing ever good happens to me. Do you have these catchphrases going off where you, you kind of find yourself like a broken record saying things, saying things to yourself like, oh, this will go wrong. Oh, it always goes wrong for me. Do you find yourself saying these kind of phrases to yourself? Stop it. Stop it in Jesus' name and say over your life, my life belongs to Jesus Christ and the future belongs to Jesus Christ. And if he wants good things to happen to me, they will happen. And whatever his will is for my life, it will be the right thing. Brothers and sisters, don't look to the future with negative despairing eyes look to the future with hope trusting in the God who is the creator of all things and the sustainer of all your life trust in Jesus trust in his spirit that he will lead you and guide you into the future helping you to find your way life is not EastEnders life has hope life has a future God has a plan, a plan for you. It won't always be easy. It won't always be simple. It won't always be easy, but God will help you. And even in times of suffering, there will be God with you. God Emmanuel helping you and leading you through. This Lent, really focus on the future, on living pressing on towards the future goals that you have had laid on your heart by God. Don't despair about the future. Don't say negative things are going to happen to you. Say, God is God and I trust God and God has a plan for me and for my life. Brothers and sisters, look forward in hope because Jesus is God and his spirit lives in you. Amen.